for this day. We thank you, God, that you care about us, you love us, you have a word for us. We thank you, God, for your encouragement and praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, my message today is living above the circumstances. Because in life, you're going to have circumstances and situations and problems and issues. And we as humans just tend to go, oh, no, it's a circumstance. I can't handle this. And we cry. We feel sorry for ourselves. We get depressed. We go shopping. We eat chocolate. We do <laughs> whatever we do to try and avoid the issue. But God has a plan. God has a plan that's good for us and brings us hope and encouragement and a good outcome. And even if the circumstance looks like it's nothing's going to change. It's bad. God help. God will help you. <laughs> God help me. He'll take you through it, around it, above it, below it, whatever. He might even make it go away. But God's not surprised. When you hit a circumstance, it's not like, oh my, what just happened to that poor person? No, no, God knew what was going to come. And he knows we're going to have circumstances in life. And he knows we're going to face trials and tribulations. So guess what? He gave us his word. He gave us his wisdom that will show us how to handle what comes our way. So God's not surprised. He has given us a plan on how to deal with what we face sometimes because we're always, you know, we have our good times when life is really easy, but we have a lot of times when life is really hard. And you know what? Our attitude determines our altitude. Because if we're feeling sorry for ourselves and being depressed about it and crying about it and telling everybody how bad it really is, then, then you're miserable. You, the situation may be a big problem. I'm, I'm not saying that. God knows that sometimes we have big situations or sometimes we make mountains out of molehills. But a lot of that depends on how we face it. And how we, you know, and we go to God and we use what we already know or what we don't know. You know, we've got to go to the Word and find, how do I deal with this? You know, all through Scripture, God gives plans to the Israelites as to how to win the war. So we have the ability to have victory through Christ. And um, on James 1... I'll give you a minute. Just go to James, if anybody's flipping to their Bibles. James 1 talks about what happens when you have trials and tribulations and what to do about it. And this scripture kind of, <laughs> I love this scripture because part of it's like, really? But the other half is, you know, it gives you encouragement. So James 1 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So, so when we have a problem, if we have a choice, we can be victims or we could be victors. So if we choose to be victorious through Christ, we develop persever perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Um, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. So, so you know what? When you don't know what to do when you're in a situation or circumstance, ask God, what do I do? And then, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Then they're done that. Especially in a situation, I believe, I believe, I'm hanging on strong, I'm, I'm, I believe, well, I, I think I believe. You know, it just, it, it get to that point where it's like, no, I believe that God has the best for me and I'm not going to doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So God's telling us in that scripture, we have to keep our eyes focused on him and not look to the left or the right. Because if you look to the, like when um, 
Peter was walking on the water. He was, he was just doing fine walking on the water. But as soon as he looked at the water and realized that he was walking on the water and he was in a storm, he sank. So that's what happens to us. If we keep our eyes on God, we can walk through the situation and circumstances in victory because we have him. But as soon as we focus on the situation or circumstance, then we begin to sink. Our emotions sink. Our depression comes. We feel sorry for ourselves. And, you know, God doesn't want that for us. He knows we're going to have trials and tribulations, but that we persevere with him and we build our maturity that way. And um, so I was also thinking about, you know, keeping our focus on God and, um, oh, I have one, one more thing about storms. I heard a quote the other day, and they said, whether Jesus calms the storm or calms us in the storm, his love is the same and his grace is enough. So, you know, when we're in a storm, he'll calm the storm in us. We don't have to be, you know, have that depression in us. And when I like what Paul said in Philippians 4.11, um, he said, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's what happens to us sometimes. That's what we have to learn. It's like, God, help me to be like Paul, that whether I'm having problems, I'm content. And when things are really good, I'm content and I don't wander. And uh, I was also thinking about uh, Isaiah 40. Let me find it in my Bible. Um, I'm going to start at 28. So Isaiah 40, 28. Do you not know and have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary. Well, do you ever grow tired or weary? I do. (laughs) But God does not grow tired or weary, and he's our strength. And his understanding, let's see, he will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Now here's the key. He can give strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Even though youth tired, get grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those, but here's the key, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on eagles' wings. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will not grow faint. So God is our strength, just like the eagles give us strength. I mean, there's like we, the scripture says we're like eagles. We soar above it. You know, eagles, when there's a storm, no problem. They catch the, the wind and they fly above the storm. So just like the eagles, we can fly above the storm in Christ's strength, in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Um, I was, did, read a little bit about eagles because their perception is different. So their perception of things, um, so their vision, they have a 340 degree field to, so, so they can almost see, you know, totally around them. And um, they have excellent long-distance vision. They can see clearly at eight times further than a human, so they can spot a rabbit uh, uh, two miles away. So why, why I bring that forth is because through Christ, his perspective, we can be like the eagle and see things differently then our human emotions always want us to be like, oh, my goodness. No, no, we don't need to go that way. Um, I want to, I pulled a few, uh, I'm going to move around here. So one second, bear with me. Where did I put it? So I was thinking about perception because our perception is not God's perception. We see the situation and we have a tendency to freak out. God sees the situation and he's in control. So, can yeah. 
So what is your perspective? You look at this building, it's sinking into the ground, right? That's what, how you're going to feel in that situation. Oh, no. But I want to show you a YouTube that will show you the true situation. This is what a human perspective is, but let's run the YouTube so you can see the truth about this building. Same building, same situation, same thing, all perspective. You could be all freaking out because the building's sinking, but it's not. You could be all freaking out because your situation is horrid, but God has a plan. You can, you can stop that one now. <laughs> a little more on perspective. There's another, let's just look at those other slides so you can, um, that one. It's not always what it looks like. Take a look at what's at the bottom, too. So what this reminds me, this, this, is, this is a street painting. They're on a street. They're sitting on a street. But we look at it and think, oh my gosh, they're going down the river and they're going to hit an alligator. And that's what the devil's like. I mean, he's like, look how bad it is. Oh, no. Yes, you're going to hit the alligator. Here it comes. But that's not truth. That's not God's perspective. He has a plan and a purpose for our life that is good. He's not going to let us slide down into the alligator's mouth. I want to read the definition of perception. It's a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. So the battlefield is in our mind. It's our perception. When you start panicking, stop. You know, I was reading about emergency. <laughs> this reminded me, too, of when there's an emergency, the first thing they tell you to do is don't panic. I'm just talking a regular old plane emergency, like a car accident, whatever it is. Don't panic, because you, if you make a decision and panic, you might make the wrong decision. So it's like God, and it's all about mental impression. Don't panic. Say, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Seek his wisdom. And, uh, okay, another word that's close to perception is to deceive. Because when you look at these um, PowerPoint pictures that I'm showing you, it's really deception. It's an optical illusion. Your mind thinks that the building is sinking. Your mind thinks, oh, there really is a river there, but you pretty quickly see not. But the thing is, it's deception. So to deceive can cause someone to believe something that is not true, typically in order to gain some personal advantage so that a person the devil, can deceive you for his personal gain and to get you off track. So that's why it's so important to keep our eyes on Jesus when we're in a circumstance to make sure we're following his plan, his purpose, his ways. So another word or some synonyms for perception or deception are to swindle, defraud, cheat, trick, hoodwink, hoax or dupe. That's what the devil wants to do to us in circumstances is to hoodwink us and get us all panicked and afraid and not putting our eyes on God. I, I don't know about you, but when I've made decisions in panic or fear, ain't a good decision 99% of the time. It's so important to keep our eyes on him. So I want to go to 1 Samuel 30. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Can you just show the last street art? I love these optical illusions. So what I like about this one, do you ever feel like you're looking into the pit of despair? And the enemy's going, oh, yeah, that's really bad. But he knows the truth. There's not really a pit there. So when we look to God, we see truth, not what our, our mental image or impression is. So um, I'm going to stop the PowerPoint for now, 
And I don't remember if I gave you this one, but 1 Samuel 30. So let's turn to 1 Samuel 30. All right, I'm almost there. There we are. I love this story about David and Ziklag. I'm sure a lot of you have heard it before. There's a lot of lessons to learn in this. When David and his men came to Ziklag, well, you know, they were, they were out fighting. And um, so when he came to Ziklag, they found destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. That's a circumstance. They came back, they were wiped out, and their whole families were taken. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no more strength to weep. And that does happen. I mean, sometimes we hit some really big circumstances, and we really do need, you know, there is a time of grieving. But you don't stay there. I'm sorry, can I have my water? (laughs) Thanks. So, then you go on, and David's two wives had been captured. I'm not even going to try and say their names. (laughs) And so now, it goes on to say that David was greatly distressed. I mean, we do have circumstances where we get distressed, but we don't stay there. That's what you're going to see, is you're not, he's not going to stay there. And there's two different reactions between David and the men as to how they handled the situation. Um, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David, so that's what we have to do in a situation. Our strength is in God. We're we're going to be distressed and upset and, you know, whatever for a while, but then we have to say, whoa, stop it, because he sought God. You'll see as we go on that David found the right thing to do. David found strength in the Lord. Then David said to Abathar, the priest, the son of... Amalek, I, don't, I can't pronounce these names. Bring me the ephod. Abathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord. How many times do we forget to inquire of the Lord because we're panicked and we're just going to do what we want to do? So we have to say, God, what do we do? And God told him, oh, and he said, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will they overtake me? I'm sorry, will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. So how I look at that is as we inquire of God, he will show us what to do so that we will pursue and succeed. Because he's got a plan. It's not always the same time, same plan, but he always has a plan. If you kind of study through all the different ways that he's brought Israel out of problems with their warriors and how they've won. They're different, but they always inquire of the Lord and follow what God has to say, not what our brain has to say. I mean, God gave us a brain, so we're still using it, but be careful that you say, okay, God, I think this is the situation. This is the situation. This is what I think I should do. What do you think, God, before you move forward? And then on... um, 2 Kings 16. I love this one too because it's, this is a little bit about perception too because we think we're done for. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 Kings 6. So many times we think that's it done for. And so Elisha and his servant, there's a whole background story to this, but I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, But the armies were after Elisha, and they were out to destroy him. And he said, um, so then, that's where I'll start. 
Um, so the king of Aram was after Elisha, and they said, go, he said, go find out where Elisha is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. So then they sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. So here's Elisha and his servant. It's nighttime. Had a good dinner, having resting, taking their time, relaxing. Life is good. Then they wake up. <laughs> and the, and they, the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning and an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. You ever feel surrounded? <laughs> oh, my Lord, what shall I do, the servant asked. I've said that before. What am I going to do? This is the worst. What, so what does the ser- Elisha say, the man of God? Don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Well, 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 wait a minute. There's two of us, and there's an entire army outside the city. What? <laughs> that would be my reaction. Uh, wait, can we count? One, two, army. <laughs> uh, so, so Elijah prayed, Oh, Lord, open his eyes. That's what we got to pray sometimes. Open our eyes to the truth. Open his eyes so he may see. The Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around. So when God, you know, we don't think about it, but God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we don't always stop to think, oh, God is for us, and the angels are on our side, and God has a plan. God's plan worked on this, in this case, and I'm not going to read through it. They, the enemy army was blinded, and they were captured. So God uses different ways than we always think are going to happen to help us out. And... Um, Hebrews 13, 5, this is the Amplified. I will never, under any this circumstance, this is the one about not being forsaken, but I like it in the Amplified, Hebrews 13, 5. I will never, under any circumstances, desert you, nor give you up, or leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. I would write that down, Hebrews 13, 5, because when you're in a tough spot, man, I'd whip that scripture out in the Amplify because it keeps your focus. It keeps your focus. He's not going to relax his hold on you. He's not going to desert you. He's not going to leave you without support. In any degree, will he not? He's not going to leave you helpless. He's going to take care of you. That's, he's got a plan. He knows that stuff is coming, and he's not surprised. He doesn't go, oh, no, what happened? <laughs> he's more like, we're like, oh, no, what happened? And he's like, <clears throat> Um, you know, talk to me. I am not surprised by this circumstance. Now I want to go back to the PowerPoint about thriving. Because when I was studying and thinking, God's like, you know, sometimes you're just surviving. And you're just like trying, I'm going to survive this. No, no, you're going to thrive through this. Because God promised us abundant life. John 10.10, 10, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance and it over, uh, to full till it overflows. He wants you to have an abundant, awesome, wonderful life. He wants you to enjoy every moment of it. He wants you to enjoy your family or your kids or your work even or walking in the woods or driving to work. He wants you to enjoy life. All the little things that God has given you in life, he wants you to enjoy it. And he wants you to have life abundantly, emotionally, spiritually, physically. He doesn't want us down and out and depressed and upset. He, he's promised us abundant life. 
So if you want to thrive, you can say I took the word thrive and wrote it down the side of the, the uh, PowerPoint. First, you have to trust him. Our hope is in God, not in the situation. Our hope is, really, if you get really down to it, I mean, our hope, we live here on earth, so our hope is he's going to take us through the situation or perform a miracle and get rid of the situation. But our final hope is in him. We're going to spend eternity with him, so we just have to trust him. He knows what to do. For H, I have hear him through his word. That is the, it's just so awesome. You ever been down and you get out your word and you just start reading and you feel better? Or a lot of times I'll, I'll take a whole page of scriptures that I like and print them and put them in my Bible. So when I'm down, I don't even have to look for them. They're right here. They're in my Bible. Some of them I have memorized, some not. But that's a really good way to help you get out of it when you're depressed and when you're upset or when you're in a situation. What am I going to do? Then for R, renew your mind, revive, and refresh. Refreshing is awesome. When you're down and out, or like, okay, let's say you're, it's summer, you're outside, it's 90 degrees, you're hot, you're miserable, you go inside to air conditioning and jump in the pool or whatever. How refreshing is that? Oh, or a big glass of water. Well, God wants us that way emotionally and spiritually, that when we get, we get down, we renew our mind, and we get that refreshing. So Romans 12 talks about the renewing of the mind. Um, I have to find that scripture now. I'm having a moment. Where did I put it? <laughs> I don't remember it. But um, one second. Oh, Romans 12, 2. There we go. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Okay, don't conform. To, I'm going to stop there for a minute. If he says, don't, be, don't conform to the patterns of this world, what's the pattern of the world? I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm depressed. I'm upset. How could you do this to me? God, I'm mad at you. You know, I, I can't believe this. I'm mad at whoever caused this circumstance for me. But God says, don't conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will is. You know, I was thinking if, about transformation. When you're being conformed to the world and being angry and upset and not forgiving and just walking in negativity... You're kind of like, I think of the transformation of the butterfly. You're kind of like the caterpillar in the cocoon, but you break out when you renew your mind and you become a, fly, a butterfly and you fly above it. Um, let's see. In him we find peace. You know, if we don't trust God and we don't read his word, we're not going to have peace. And God wants to give us the peace that surpasses all understanding. I, I've been not always there. I don't always walk in that. But there, have, there was one time when, and this was in a corporate situation years ago, and they're like, how can you be so calm? You know, it opens up a way to, to even witness because it's not going to do you any good to get all upset and all angry about it and all frustrated. And you just got to trust God. And then you have peace. So, you know, you know, Philippians 6, we don't have to go there. I'll just read it real quick. Be anxious in nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. You know, this is a process. Years ago, I used to walk in the con conform to the world, mostly in depression, being all upset, being miserable all the time, and 
there were, cir- there were circumstances. I mean, I, I think everybody has or will end up in a circumstance that really is not pretty. But you still have a choice. Do you want the peace of God that surpasses all understanding? And it guards your heart and your mind. So the situation's bad. You have, I mean, you are going to have some grieving or distress. You know, it's not magically goes away. But as you get strong in God and you walk in God, you're going to have the peace that passes all understanding. Excuse me. You'll have the victory. So I want to give you some synonyms for victory. If you walk in the peace of God, you're a winner, a victor, a hero, a champion, an overcomer. You defeat the enemy. You beat the enemy. You're a fighter. I mean, I think Iraqi, (laughs) all those who are that age bracket. He was the underdog, but he overcame. Now, that's, that's choice number one. You can be the victor. Oh, well, what about the antonyms or the opposite? Or you could choose, um, the antonym is loser. <laughs> an over, if you're not an overcomer, you're a loser. Don't lose your peace and your joy and your happiness and your fortitude and your strength and your victory to the devil. It's your choice. Your choice. That's one thing that took me a long time to learn because when you're in a bad circumstance, oh, you call people and they tell you how bad it really is. I feel sorry for you. And there's a place for compassion. But the problem is that they could take you down the road of feeling sorry for yourself or they can take you down the path of God's got a plan. God is for you, not against you. You are above and not beneath. You can do this. You can get through this. God will provide for you. You don't have to fall for that, oh, it's so bad and it will never change. You don't have to live like that. Oh, expect. So what are you expecting? You know, when you go through circumstances, this is where I was at, and I still have to watch myself. One little itsy-bitsy thing happens, and you're like, expect the worst. You make the mountain out of a molehill situation. You immediately jump from my toe hurts to I'm going to get my, you know, it's, it's something big, and all you did was stub your toe. There's all kinds of things that How many, you know, I think we all have, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of us have said, oh no, this is the worst, it's going to, I know what's going to happen, I know how bad it's going to be, it's going to go from this to this, and it's going to be the worst, and it doesn't happen. I would say nine times out of ten, it doesn't happen, you waste all that time, we waste all that time worrying and fretting and calling people and planning to, what am I going to do when the world blows up and da 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 da. No, we have to keep our eyes on God and expect the best. In Proverbs 15, 15, you don't have to go there, this is just a scripture that shows how we think sometimes. All the days of the desponding and the afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and foreboding. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of the circumstances. Regardless. This is a good one to write down. Proverbs 15, 15, if you're taking notes. (laughs) Because you have a choice. You can be desponding and afflicted, and your days are made evil by anxious and foreboding thoughts. You could spend your whole day being anxious. Or, but he who has a glad heart has a continual feast. Continual. And regardless, I love this, if it's in the Amplified, regardless of the circumstance. See, we guilty, we look at our happiness and contentment and joy depends on our circumstance. And it is a lot easier to be happy when circumstances are easy, but that's not our joy. God is our joy. God is our hope. We trust in him. So regardless of the circumstance, we can be happy. And then I want to go to Jeremiah 29, 11. This is my favorite verse. <laughs> um, 
and I know most people are familiar with it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So you got a hope, you got hope, you got a future. Then you will, now here's the key though. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. So God's waiting for us to come to him and pray to him. And then he listens to us. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All your heart. You have a passion for anything. It's just like, I got to do it I, every day. I got to do it or every white week or every month. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, that's what, how God wants us to seek after him with all our heart. And I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and bring you back from captivity. You know, we're in emotional captivity when we're feeling sorry for ourselves. And God says if we seek him with all our heart, then he releases us and brings us back from captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and places I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So God's really saying... It's not just, oh, yay, God has a plan and a hope for us, which is true. Oh, yay. But there's some things tied to that. Are you seeking him? Are you, are, you do, are you seeking him with your whole heart? Are you captive right now by depression or anger or unforgiveness or frustration or being worried? Well, you don't have to be. We don't have to be. God says, you got your choice. If you seek after me in all the scriptures that we have here too, it's just awesome when you write them. I would suggest you go through scriptures and write down the ones that speak to you so that when you're frustrated, when you're upset, when you're depressed, when you're running with how bad it is, you don't even have to think about it. And then I also suggest you re memorize a few of them because then you don't even have to go and get your Bible, and all the scriptures that you were into because you've got them right here. Or even sometimes I memorize portions. I just know that I don't have it memorized, but I know that, um, you know, God has a plan and a purpose for me if I seek after him. I am not I'm, um, the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. So sometimes I can't memorize. I mean, I probably could, but <laughs> sometimes I just memorize what the meat of the scripture. You know, think on, every, think on things that are noble and true and pure and lovely. Oh my gosh, with the world the way it is and you watch the news, that just blows that scripture right out the door. Now, now you should know what's going on in the world, but are you concentrating more on what's going on in the world or what's going on in the word? So, in conclusion, write down your scriptures, memorize the meat of them, and live above the circumstances. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, thank you for that. Um, if Pastor Horace doesn't mind, I'll have him close us out in prayer. Is that all right? All right. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, you are such a great God. You have given us such a wonderful word, as some of them call it, your love letters to us, and they truly are. Lord, there's so much, so much that we can learn yet if we want to. There's so much that we can change our own minds and going along with you or winding up in a difficulty and hanging on to the difficulties. Lord, I thank you that you have married the words that we need to hear today. We are victorious in you. We are the overcomers. And we can step on the devil because we have the authority, not because of ourselves, but because of you, Lord. You gave yourself for each one of us. You died on the cross for each one of us. And all the burdens and all the sickness, diseases you carried on the cross for us. Lord, and you overcame death. And that's one thing that the enemy did not expect. 
Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being victorious for us. Thank you for passing it down to us. Thank you, Lord, that we don't be under the circumstances, that we don't have to be under the circumstances, but we have to be above the circumstances because that's where you are. And that's where we should be because the word says that we are sitting with you in the heavenlies. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Mary, that you were able to speak to her, to bring us these words. I thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness to you. I thank you, Lord, that uh, <laughs> you are blessing her. You are ministering to her and through her. And I thank you, Lord, that all of us here today, that we may take these words home, as Mary suggested, go through the word of God, the words that speak to you, write them down. Pick up the important areas in there that speak to you. Pour it into your heart. Ground it into your heart. Let it grow in your heart. And the more your word grows in us, oh, hallelujah, the more we are mature in you and the more we look forward for doing and acting on that, what you have shown us. Help us, Lord, to not to be afraid, not to worry, not to be anxious, not to panic, not to get into depression. And every time these things come upon us, that we refuse it immediately, that we will not give in to it. So I thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your faithfulness to us. Because you never leave us nor forsake us. You're always there for each one of us. And you want us to have an abundant life, abundant in every area, abundant most of all with you and enjoying ourselves in you and with you. Thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity that we have here today to hear your word. And I pray, Lord, as we part, that we take it along with us that we chew on it, think about it more and more, and then begin to change in the areas of not getting into what the enemy tries to throw at us. We are victorious, we are overcomers, and we can stand against him, and we must not give in to him. We must not confess his words, we must confess your words. And thank you for that, Lord. So, Lord, I, again, I thank you for Mary and her willingness to serve here. I thank you, Lord, for all those that came. And I pray again as we part that we enjoy our life in you and with others around us. In Jesus' name, amen.